Hello everyone, Drumat here and for this video we will free coach a player from North America called Juliet, a name that I'm sure I didn't pronounce right. Now I've made some days ago a post on Reddit to Leah Mains in which I've picked two random people for two free coaching sessions consisting of two hours of discussion and gameplay analysis. I might do more free coaching in the future, but for now I'm truly busy with school and all. However, if you really think you need some improvement, I will put some price sessions in the description, either coaching specifically for Talia or mid lane coaching, because these are my areas of expertise, and this is mostly because I don't have a lot of free time available. I've also launched a personal Discord for Talia mains discussions, mid mains discussion, or for simply asking me stuff. If you ever want to talk to me, I'll be there online more often than on YouTube or Reddit. Link is in the description. The process for my coaching sessions is the following. I will check your general playstyle, then I will ask you to join a game and I will spectate that and after the game I will simply tell you where I think you can improve and what to change. Furthermore, after the game I will give you a text with everything we talked. In this game I'm coaching Joliet, a gold Talia player from North America. You will not hear me directly talking to him on Skype because this is recorded after the coaching session. My laptop does not handle Skype share screen. OBS and League of Legends at the same time. So here we are in the game. After I've checked uh, his uh, mastery, I mean runes and how he plays and his uh, summoner spells and so on. Um, I've uh, asked him to play a ranked game and I've spectated it. Now, in this game, and every time I uh, want to remember something, I just have a classic pen and paper and wrote it down. I actually have a little notebook. Now, in here I will write and I wrote every moment that I thought that could be talked about. For example, at uh, about minute 2 and 30 seconds, he will miss position and uh, you will see in about 5 seconds what I am going to tell you. Now, when fighting Lux, you should stay behind minions in this case. And why would you even go close enough to her? Um, you have to poke with your Q and you have to stay always behind minions. Right here is the problem. If he just stood behind those minions and Q her, that could have worked. You don't have level 3 yet, you can't kill her. Obviously you can't kill her with full HP anyway. But you can stick behind minions and poke with your Q. Also, he plays with Eerie and in longer range matchups, uh, some pro players do use Arcane Comet and myself use it all the time also. Because you don't need to get close to her to use your Q and she won't be able to proc her auto attacks on you with her E and yeah, I've said that right, I hope so. Yeah, eat then off stack, that's, that's the logic. And you also have to always dodge, always dodge her Q. Now, uh, here is again the mistake. Just don't uh, go that close to a Lux or stay behind minions when you go that close or just dodge the Q. But that's kind of hard when you go in that close range. Now, uh, minute 3 is coming up and... Uh, our friend here didn't word yet any lane. I've recommend to him so that he words either this bush if he knows the enemy jungle started here, or this zone here if he knows the enemy jungle started uh, red. If you don't know that, uh, just normally uh, word one side like here and stick to stick to the zone. Now. The mistake here, the second mistake here, was that uh, he didn't word and he almost paid with his life for it. Now, you can see here Jack's coming. Now, a word there would have been suffice, suffice enough. And here, actually, he could have killed him, I'd say. Uh, because one Q from him and possibly Ignite, but he doesn't have that. It's not the problem, though. The only problem here is that... Uh, he didn't word. And also, remember, also word 
at minute 3 or around that, or when you think their jungler is level 3, basically after taking red, wolves, uh, blue buff, and so. And uh, all this expect that gank. You also need to expect the level 2 gank from some junglers, even Jax, uh, like Pantheon, Jarvan, or something. Some junglers like to cheese you, or even Twitch Shaco. Uh, Shaco, I don't think he can. They want to come from this zone or this zone at level 2, or anything that can be done. Uh, with their CC. If they do have a CC spell and it's available at level 2, you need to be aware of the level 2 cheese gank. Uh, moving on, I will from some from time to time move it a bit faster. Uh, let me check the next thing. I will first double click on this. Yes. What I recommended to him is that every time he fights or back out, backs off, he should try to keep the lane even, he shouldn't let Lux push him to tower. Now, in this scenario he doesn't have flash up, so it's kind of safer for him to stay near his tower zone, but normally I'd recommend all players until level 6 if possible, and in most matchups like Lux for, the, for example, to try to keep the lane even, uh, because you would love at level 6 to just push it from the mid uh, of the lane towards their tower instantly and just roam. And if it's pushed in your tower, you won't be able to do that. You can also start a slow push. I'm going to steal this one from Dopa. You can also start a slow push by leaving the three minions, these minions that come in a wave, outside of the turret range and just kill the big minions, the fighter minions. And so, there, here in the zone it will start a slow push, and if he backs off or so, you can try to push that way and roam bot instantly after that. Moving on. Uh, next thing, it's at minute 6. Uh, right now it's just normal farming with no kill potential going on. And uh, he farms very well and he plays very safe. I don't know why he's gold actually, because in this game he didn't do that much, uh, that many mistakes that as I thought a gold player would do. And his kill here at the end was pretty good. Now, at level 6, I want to pinpoint, as I pinpointed to him, another thing. Here, just let me get to 6. Right here. Now, let's pause. Right here, somewhere in the next seconds, bot lane will start a fight. Now, when you're level 6, when you're level 6, always pay attention to, or to other lanes uh, in order to try to help them. Now, if you notice their team comp in this game, and you should always notice your team comp at the start of the game as a Tilia main, you should see that the only guy who can possibly carry late game in our team, in our beloved red team, is Vayne. And only Vayne can turn the game around later on. Their team has multiple carries, and if you kind of feed her and play a protect the team comp Vayne with Shen and Trash and Talia poking from outside and trying to get also some damage done, you can also win the game. You can actually win the game from this point. Now. The main focus of ours in this game, in this particular game, is that we have to gank bot lane. Uh, the main point that I want to emphasize is that. And so, so we have to try to gank them. Uh, and as I said, soon enough there will start a fight on bot lane. I need to slow this down so I can focus. At this point, uh, our Talia main right here could push and roam bot, but for some reason this guy moves top. And that's not necessarily a mistake because he might have thought he could kill Jax here with his ult, but here there's an interesting thing that's happening. Now, you don't expect, obviously, you don't expect to be able to gank when the lane is pushed like this. But in an opportunity like this, you could just stay mid. You could just try to stay mid and wait for anything that's fishy. Uh, going top here was one of the mistakes because 
there was literally nothing to do here on just diving a jax uh, that you don't really want because both of your top laners are low and you might risk dying. Now he doesn't have any mana uh, and nor flash up, but it would be extremely uh, interesting about diving a jax. He might even reach for mana for lip strike until you reach it. And uh, that's risky. That's way too risky. Instead of that, you could just stay mid and push the lane and try to see if there's an opening on bot. Now here would have been a perfect moment to start going bot. Or at least to try to push it, but instead our friend here goes a little top, which didn't help. We did notice this word, but it wasn't enough. Instead of this, if he would have been bot, we could have maybe killed Ezreal here, maybe get something, because they were in a huge wave of minions. There was no risk for our Talia main to die if they if he would go here in the middle of the wave. Now, moving on into the next step. Uh, you should always think of who you need to feed. This is still the current step of it. So, focusing there on bot lane could have helped. Probably you wouldn't save Vayne, but you would feed yourself a little and you would stop Ezreal from getting fat. Okay, moving a little faster again. Here, there is a fight that's about to start on bot lane. Actually, it started a while ago, and the point that I want to make here is that you have to always pay attention to the map as a Talia main. Now, the problem was that the fight started and you could have reached it faster. But still, this was quite optimal. Not the fastest, but still there in the direction. Maybe a lower elo Talia main would have gone here and would have wasted this beautiful kill. Oh my god, that's flash. And let's keep on looking. The next mistake here is that our main turn around. Now, let's back up. When you always roam, when you roam, when you roam, I want to say, always remember that the enemy mid laner might follow. If you're Orlen Sol, if you're Twisted Fate, if you are Talon, if you are any other roamer that can go bot with a spell or an ability faster than the normal guy, always think that the mid laner might follow. In this point, our friend backed up to mid lane a little, and this scene, uh, in this scene he could have helped with heal available, he could have helped our dear friends here from not dying, or at least, I don't know, at least one of these two people could have survived in my opinion. Uh, this heal is questionable also, and they could also kill Ezreal here probably if he came here faster. So yeah, remember, always think where the enemy mid laner is and always try to be there for your team. Because if you are first and back off, the enemy mid laner might follow and kill your actual teammates because uh, you didn't stick long enough there. If he stays mid, that's okay. You can just back off if you know where he is. But if you don't, be very careful with your thinking patterns. Okay, again back mid. Let me just put the page here. Another thing that I didn't talk about much in all of my videos, and even in my plays, you don't see me doing a thing much often, buying a lot of vision words. I've checked how some Korean mid laners plays. I've even stole from them their play style, their play style, sorry, and um, they buy a lot of vision words. A typical mid laner in Korea, in Master or Challenger, buys at least 7, 6, 7 or 8 vision words per game. Now, think about it a little. Our uh, average of 1 or 2 vision words per game versus 9, that's a lot. And um, the another tip that I want to talk about that I also stole from Dopa is that Every time you buy a vision ward, like he did here, every time you do that, when you're coming to lane, if your lane is not here, 
I mean, if minions are pushing you into your tower, if you're coming, when you're coming to lane, just put the vision ward somewhere at one of the entrances of your jungle, like here, I'd say, or here, here, I, it will be more useful, and use it before you get to lane, and the enemy sees that you bought a vision ward. Now, uh, that would be extremely useful for you because they would not expect you to have a vision world somewhere. Now, in lower halos, I do not expect people to actually watch every time someone puts a vision world and track it down. But in higher halos, platinum plus, that might happen. And you should be careful about it. Here, it's another mistake that I didn't like. His blue buff was almost over. And Olaf was base. And Lux was here. They could have moved for this 100 gold objective. This buff right here is worth some, I mean, at least close to an entire wave, somewhere 3 or 4 minions, 5 maybe, I don't know exactly, it's 100 gold that you could use, and you could also spam your spells and gain a little cooldown reduction for your ultimate if you cast it. Don't let buffs, don't let blue buffs and red buffs and other things on the map stick there and stay there for no reason. Always, always take them and... Uh, abuse any objective you can okay i didn't click her okay moving on soon there's a fight in which our friend could have engaged in my opinion now looks doesn't have flash right here remember that looks doesn't have flash but it might come up until the point let me see does speeding up the game? No, doesn't. Anyway, right here, right here. Let me let me slow that down. Our mid laner got caught by Lux's Q, but he also used his E perfectly and caught her up. In this point, Lux has cooldown on Q and Lux has also cooldown on E. The fact that this is available, it's actually a visual bug because it doesn't stop when you pause. In this point, we do have flash and she doesn't, probably for another some seconds. Uh, many seconds. <laughs> and uh, we do have flash. Now, we used our W and E and we have some circles around. But if you notice, this circle just disappeared. And this creates an opportunity for us to go in this direction. To slowly move towards her, not to back, and to try to get the kill. We could be in range for Q, and we also have Flash to later on jump on her uh, after he uses her Q. We also see here Jax. We also see here their jungler and their bot lane, and uh, Olaf is dead. We see all of the enemy team members, and we could get a free kill on Lux. Now, obviously, she will use her shield and her barrier, but we could just randomly run towards her and try to dodge her Q and if not flash it. The, in this point, minions are also uh, far away and this is a perfect kill opportunity for our mid laner to try. Because you do have a lot of kill opportunity as a Talia main when the enemy doesn't have flash and their CC spell available. This is about in 5 seconds, 6 seconds, so just, that's the cooldown that's about in this scene right now. It says that it's available but it's not. And in this scene, you could just, instead of randomly moving up, you could just run towards her, wait for the Q, you know the animation, and you can flash it. Uh, you also have your heal ready. Dying is not a problem, and you also know where every member of the enemy team is. But still, still with that, this scene will come mid in about a second. And if you can see here, he will do a very nice patting, and will probably jump forward or just kick him. Oh, that's a nice flash. Here, again, some spells were missed, and Lux could have been killed earlier. Normally, I don't recommend wasting flash in this point, because she's basically dead, but here it could have been more useful to flash, because I think there was a high risk of dying at this point. She had 100 to 120 mana. Now that's enough for an ultimate right here. An ultimate and an auto attack that can kill you. Uh, but yeah, I would say that would have been risky if uh, if 
she didn't flash if the Talia main. She didn't, she he didn't, he lived, and it was fine. I think he because it's male, the guy. And um, it was fine in this scenario, but a little more mana to Lux when she was in this bush, and that was potentially a kill for her. Moving on, moving on. Uh, I want to talk about a little of the build. Let me not to directed camera, sorry. Still on the slow, okay. Let me pick. I've noticed in this uh, particular moment that our mid main here buys Mercury Thread, if I'm not mistaken, at this point exactly. Yes, uh, I wrote that down so <laughs> I had it predicted. Um, buying Magic Resist Boots against a team com that has only a Lux, it's not really the most optimal thing to go for because finishing Morello right now it's your top priority priority for the cooldown reduction that it gives and for the uh, extra damage that you have let me just slow down a bit I want to finish this point uh, I recommend in every game to buy either Sorcerer Boots or Lucidity I recommend Tabbies in some of the Assassin's matchups and very rarely I recommend Mercury Treads because while they do, they do have stuns, um, some magic resist will deny your penetration from the other boots and you will lose a lot of damage in the process. Going for the sword boots in this option, in this case, is better. But still, I don't recommend going for the boots this early. I recommend buying 300 gold boots early, but after finishing Morello, I recommend finishing the actual boots because Morello is kind of a power spike on Talia for the damage it offers and the cooldown reduction for your ult. Moving on. Here Shen flashes and we get the kill. I'm going to stop the this discussion. Uh, I think you all know by this point that I recommend going Morello, Lyandris, uh, Source Boots, Rabadon's Voice Up and the defensive item in most matchups. In uh, some defensive matchups obviously go Zonia and uh, the other item Banshee's Veil. If it's AD Zonia, if it's AP Banshee, so, and so on. Uh, also, I recommend going for Arcane Comet and uh, Precision 3 Secondary just as Crown plays. And in most matchups that I can win, I will play with Ignite because I feel it's the strongest, not the safest, not the safest by far, but the strongest uh, for lane phase and for getting a kill on bot lane because you need all the help you can give yourself, all the assisting you can do to yourself. Moving on, here was a bit of a wasted flash, but it's okay from time to time. This Saxador, his score is pretty good though at the end of the game. He didn't die, I think he died only once, which is great for a Talia main. For a mid lane main, dying between 0 and 3 deaths per game, it's the most optimal thing you'll see. And uh, in this game in particular, the main mistake was that Vayne didn't get fed by either our team or our mid laner and also Shen didn't help her much either and she also died too much and got caught. I think at one point my friend told me on Skype that she even started trolling and that's quite depressive but we should still try to feed her. I do that even if the guy is negative and so on. I need to try that because either just give up and surrender your only guy who can carry this game is her, or yourself as a Talia main, but Talia falls off after minute 25, 20, 30, if you're not extremely fed or farmed. Now, the other guy is fed and farmed, but quite alone, and there are also some mistakes that keep, that keep being done but by our ADC, for example, like this. That was not optimal at all. Also flash used by Shen for no reason. Let me just do the scoreboard down. Okay, moving on to the next point. In about... Oh, here I recommended... Why it changed? Please don't change again. Here I recommended to our mid laner to try in practice tool the EW combo. E slows, as I said in some videos, E slows the target. Uh, and it's very useful. Wait, here I have another point. It's very useful to try and practice with EW combo. 
because you can hit it more easily or W, that's the main problem. And also if you play with Comet, EW is more useful and secure for your Comet to hit because W moves your Comet, as I said in countless video before, videos before. I, I think it's just one, but yeah, I like to over exaggerate. Another point, at minute 1540, uh, a thing you can do against dashes, whenever they jump on you here, try to use W under you and push him to the side. I would push him in this way, towards this world. This could ensure that you don't get stunned and Ezreal wouldn't reach you or Brom wouldn't that wouldn't do that much to you, that many auto attacks probably. Because there was a second in which he was able to hit you with that stun and also Brom hit you. And that proc the stun and you died. So yeah, against dashes try to use W under yourself. Uh, Another thing regarding money, I've seen he had two pots that he didn't sell and he didn't use for a long time. Always sell those things. Now, there is, it, we are in minute 16 and again, the fact that you didn't finish Morello could have impacted the game a bit because Morello does provide a lot of utility in some fights by based on the cooldown reduction and the extra ability power you have. Um, so yeah, finish Morello guys, finish it not in minute 16, try to finish in minute 11 or 12 uh, because this boots was enough for Morello to be finished a long time ago, so yeah, think about that guys. Um, the next point I have uh, is probably farther away, we died here, it passed some time, going to put it on speed. Um, let me see. From this point, I think the game went uh, in a down way. I mean, they also they kind of went and uh, didn't get much after this point. As you can see here in this bar, it's mostly a kill for us and like 10 for them. Vayne tries big plays, that was the problem while she was highly behind. And while we do try to get some kills on mid lane, uh, that won't be enough, and I think by this point I do not have many points to talk about because there is not much happening. There is also a mistake here, our friend uh, sticks a little too much towards the tower, towards the tower, when there are many guys coming. This tower is dead by uh, all means, and there was no point here to stay near the tower, for example. Uh, he will live here because he has Mercury Treads, but uh, the fact that you shouldn't be there uh, does not practically count to my main point of not getting these boots in uh, okay-ish AP matchups. Still, still, uh, if you can see, he's doing by far the best in his team. I'd say Shen does have 5-0, but... That doesn't matter much having kills on Shen. What matters on Shen is to feed again your ADC or your jungler or your mid laner. But mid laner uh, is not a hyper carry, so try to feed the ADC. Still, Shen and Talia played very good this game, but they were probably matched with the bad uh, teammates. Well, not the bad teammates, the worst teammates that they could get. I mean, if you would have Ezreal on your team in this point, you would have a free win. Uh, because that, that is where the difference lies in the game, in the ADC mostly. And his attitude that was probably flamish, as my friend told me after he played the game. Uh, the game won't last long from this point, as you can see here in the bar. Um, and it doesn't really... They doesn't really have much chance from this from this point after they took the inhibitor, they will just go for Baron, and that's the free game. As you can see, the pings mean also that our ABC didn't do much. Now, I would have tried somehow to gank that lane more, uh, even if he trolls. I would just lose if I don't, so that would be the main point. Uh, he also gets caught here again, and yeah... I'm pretty sure some teammates of our Talia main gave up and that was it. Because now, there's not much to do when 
player refuses to cooperate, especially the most in player, most important player in the team that's supposedly to be like theoretically. But still, if you note if you notice the stats of our mid laner, he does excellent. And again, I'm not sure how you are a gold player with these stats and with this gameplay. You didn't do crucial mistakes, you just need to roam a bit more and to finish the items in the right order. Um, the farm, honestly, and the KDA and the safety playstyle is of a, at least platinum player, so you will definitely climb. And uh, I recommend, obviously, the builds that I do for... Uh, yeah, this wall was not really good. I also recommend if you are, if you feel that you are below your division, like you think you are platinum and you are gold, just try some games with a more aggressive setup. Because as I said before, in this game there was an opportunity to actually kill the enemy looks. And getting kills on locks and feeding other lanes is the main priority. So, and if you can get kills, you can feed others faster, and you can deal more damage and so on. Also, finish that item more quickly. Uh, this is about it in the game. I want to put on the screen right now a list with all the things I've mentioned. I've sent to towards Juliet, I've sent a text file with everything and also more that some things that he needs to improve on. And I will post those tips on the screen. Uh, here are the text files. I will do some more free coaching in the future the same way, probably, randomly extracting one or two on a YouTube video or a Talia mains Reddit post. But if you really think you need some advice to improve with Talia or in mid lane in general, I could watch a game of yours and tell you how and where I think you didn't do fine. Again, link in description. I will also keep on making these videos and answer all the questions and I am also open to discussion on Discord. I will start soon the Ranked to Diamond Talia only solo queue series and I was wondering if you guys prefer full games or videos that are cropped only with the best scenes and moments. I believe I've spent some good hours on this so if you felt that this is useful please shoot a like or a share. Thank you so much for watching and have a great great day or night. See you next time guys.